1989 in Berlin, Germany. There is an event taking place that will soon change the country forever. Citizens are not able to leave the communism-ridden East Germany and venture into West Germany. This all happened on November 9th, 1989 at 12 a.m. But people often pass by what caused this, which goes back decades upon decades. It all started at the end of World War II, when the Allied powers that defeated Germany held a meeting called the Potsdam Conference. They agreed to separate Germany into four main zones, which were occupied by the United States, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union, respectively. This agreement ended up failing due to Germany being split into four different entities, each with their own agenda and interests. During 1948, due to much conflict, including a disagreement over a new form of currency, the Soviet Union put up a blockade in an attempt to push out the other powers and take Germany for themselves. The Western Allies set up the Berlin Airlift as a result, which funneled over 2 million tons of supplies into West Berlin. This event ended the agreement and split Berlin in two. Leader of the East German Communist Party, Walter Ulbrich, ordered the barricade to be built to stop the East Germans from deflecting. Overnight, the wall that split West and East Germany was built. It was a feat of engineering that no other human had seen at the time. The first iteration of the wall was very makeshift and unstable, built of barbed wire and cinder blocks, but it was what started it all. East Germans were now being caged by the wall, curtailing their freedoms, and could not travel to the free West Germany. As you would assume, this made the citizens of East Germany understandably mad. Over the remainder of 1961, the wall continued to grow. Some segments of the wall were solid concrete, which reached over 15 feet high. However, the citizens of East Germany were not going to make that wall stand in their way. Several people tried to go around or jump the wall, but few succeeded. Many people died trying to hop that wall, only it continued to grow. The few people who succeeded in jumping the wall didn't all have happy endings. Several people got punished for what they've done, some even because of the letters they wrote. Throughout the next few years, not much had changed wall-wise, except for stronger structural support. But this agreement had started to bubble up. East Germans were being killed left and right, trying to take refuge in West Germany, a place where freedom thrives. But there was someone very important about to drop a bombshell of a speech on the grounds of the Berlin Wall. Lass sie nach Berlin in common. Let them come. wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. June 26th, 1963. This is the day that President John F. Kennedy gave a speech in Berlin known as Ich bin ein Berliner which is quite possibly one of the most powerful speeches of all time. Khrushchev, Russian head of government, attempted to challenge Kennedy, but he retorted back with his famous quote, If that's true, it's going to be a cold winter, cementing the speech as one of the greatest of all time. Around this time, the whole world knew about the wall, mainly due to the speech John F. Kennedy gave at the wall and its corruption. Kennedy's speech is very famous, but perhaps it is most infamous for the phrase, I am a Berliner. The wall was now gaining more attention. In 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. traveled to West Berlin to speak at a ceremony commemorating the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Later, in 1971, an agreement was made between West and East Germany so that the citizens of East Berlin could now travel to West Berlin easier. Nearing the end of the wall's life, Ronald Reagan gave his famous Tear Down This Wall speech on June 12, 1987. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. This statement was directed towards the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Mr. Gorbachev, who Ronald Reagan addressed the quote, tear down this wall to. Throughout the wall's life, at least 171 individuals were killed attempting to get around the Berlin Wall, although more than 5,000 East Germans and 600 border guards were successful in crossing by means of jumping out of windows, 
flying hot air balloons, crawling through the sewers, and even using vehicles to ram into weaker parts of the wall. On November 9, 1989, after the Cold War was starting to come to a close, the spokesman of East Berlin's Communist Party, Gunter Schabowski, made an announcement that would eventually lead to the fall of the Berlin Wall. During a live press conference, the politician who read off a draft bill that sought to have looser restrictions when it came to civilians being able to migrate to the West. Schabowski then mistakenly said that these measures would take place immediately. Within hours of this accidental statement, thousands of citizens stormed the wall. Early the next day, even more have come, wreaking havoc, passing checkpoints, climbing over or around the wall, or just trying to demolish it. That night was filled with celebration from the citizens of Berlin. Families were reunited after many years of separation. Many people took to the wall with pickaxes, trying to inflict as much damage as they could. Others drank with friends, and some even vandalized the defunct wall with spray paint and such. Not for the mistake he made, the Berlin Wall might be standing today. The citizens were so demanding of this wall being removed that the guards just had to give up. The wall was done. A few days later, the wall was officially torn down. The civilians got their way. Little is left of the Berlin Wall. There are only three long sections of it left, and the rest was destroyed entirely. One part is even part of a memorial made in 1999. Some parts of the wall, example watchtowers, fragments, etc., are still located in some cities. Some fragments of the wall are sold on places like eBay and German souvenir shops, though most of them are probably fake. It was December 25th, 1991, and most people were celebrating Christmas, perhaps the new game console or a new coffee mug, but this day was a lot more important than it first seemed. On this day, the Soviet Union, a terrorizer of Eastern Europe for many decades at this point, was brought down, and Gorbachev resigned as leader. Due to the destruction of the Berlin Wall, the Soviet Union had lost a lot of its grasp. Many people finally knew about the USSR due to the events of the Cold War. It began to grow weaker and many people demanded for a democratic system. Once Gorbachev had changed it to a multiple party system, it was clear that the Soviet Union was near the end of its lifespan. The reason we remember this historic barrier is not just to talk about a wall, but to honor those who fought to have it removed and who died trying to cross it. After the Berlin Wall fell, it seemed like the whole world was affected. ABC reporter Peter Jennings described this as astonishing news on a late night broadcast telling Americans of this spectacular event. While the fall of the Berlin Wall was good for the most part, many problems have come out of it and remain to this day. Some East Germans still feel like second class citizens compared to West Berliners. Now almost 30 years later, the story of the Berlin Wall stands as a symbol of what happens when tyrannical governments try to take away people's rights. The fall of the Berlin Wall was more than the fall of a wall, it was the fall of communism.